All right, media, thank you for your patience. We'll do a quick post shoot around media availability with Brittany Sykes and Christine Anigwe. Um, we'll get started with Ross Gold and Wude with Spectrum Sportsnet. Hey, ladies. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Just wanted to, uh, you know, ask about these continued matchup. Last time uh, we were at home, it was Brittany Griner, and now you got Tina Charles coming up. What's really key in these matchups um, where, you know, you're still without the Aguma case, so just making up for that size? Um, I think it's one of those things where we, we look ahead in the schedule and we knew that we were going to be playing some dominant players in the paint. And um, it's just one of those things where we just have to keep banding together now, you know, that we still don't have um, Chanae and Neka, but we have Christine, we have Z, we have Nia, we have Bria, we have bodies that can definitely uh, guard and defend players. Tonight we have Tina Charles um, and, and Plaisance and a couple other bigs on their team, but you know, Charles takes up a lot of attention and she's been balling, but um, we look forward to uh, getting in there and, and trying to stop her. She's a great prolific scorer. So our job is to make sure that we limit those touches or make those points as hard as possible. Christine, you as well. Um, and also knowing that Tina's uh, very multifaceted, you know, I guess what would be a, pri what are the priorities then? The priorities? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for us, we're just trying to like use our strengths and run and have pace and play with the high tempo. Not a lot of teams in this league can do that for four quarters. So I feel like I credit our team and our staff just like believing in what we do. And as you can see, like we're not losing games by uh, lack of effort. It's more so just like that experience that we're lacking. So. I feel like the more experience that we get playing with each other, the more we're, the more confident we're getting and the better we defend others. So I, I think now we all kind of know how each other plays. So like, it's going to be a fun game to play. Um, yeah, and I think also like Nick and Chanae are still with us. They're still on the bench. They're like coaches right now, essentially. And um, having them on the bench is really, really, really helpful for us. So I'm really excited to play Tina tonight. Um, again, she's a really good score, but we have good scores. We have good defenders, and we have all that we need. They beat Seattle with seven players, and I feel like that's fatigue. You know, fatigue sets in, and now we can play with that high tempo, high energy that we're used to playing with. Um, what about for you, Christine? Basically, from the point where they you got picked up on the hardship exemption. Of course, you played with the team before, but to now, how would you describe the way you're feeling comfort wise and kind of rhythm wise with this team? Um, it's feelings, honestly, like, I feel like it was hard. Like I played overseas for like seven months, six months from the bubble. I haven't really seen my family. And this is like, an, like, an, like a, like, I guess like these are like my, this is like my family now, you know, like it's hard being on a hardship, like we have to live in the hotels, we don't, we can't really leave our family right now. And um, this is like giving me life, like playing basketball, what I love to do. Um, this is like just keeping me motivated, keeping me strong. And I'm just grateful to be playing in LA with all the support that I have. Like my, my coaches are here, my trainer is here. I have like so much here. Um, and that's my family, this is my family. So um, I'm grateful, but like also like it's, it is hard. It is, when we talk about adversity, um, we talk about just like persevering and getting stronger and learning lessons. And I think from the, I'm glad everything happened the way it did because it's just making me stronger. It's keeping me disciplined and it's like bringing out the love of the game that I have. So I'm excited to continue to play in LA with this staff, with these, with my teammates, essentially family. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's just exciting. You know? like every game is an opportunity for us to get together, play harder, play for each other, learn each other. Um, we all have a lot of emotions on this team. So we're all just trying to like 
it's all out of love though. It's all out of love. It's nothing like malicious. So that's why I feel like I'm super comfortable here. And yeah, so. And my last question um, would be just that, because I haven't asked it to you guys, is just if, if you have any further reflections on kind of what happened with NECA being left off of the USA national team, um, if there's something you want to add to the conversation about, uh, I guess, the overall disappointment. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, I don't take that back. I meant what I said, but... Um, Honestly, for real, it's it's crazy that, you know, somebody like NECA and the resume that she's carried for her entire career, you know, to not even give her, you know, a chance or give her a reason, you know, why there wasn't um, a decision being made that she would be on that team. You know, she's been in like, what, 10 years now? 10 years. And I mean, she's the president of, you know, our league our you know, our committee. Um, shoot, I mean, go off of last year with just the bubble alone and the things that she had to do. And it wasn't just her, but we're talking about NECA here, right? And I mean, it's NECA, like it's NECA. And it's just, it's just crazy. It's just, it's crazy. I really, really wish things could have been different for my teammate, but we all have her back and we know that she's more than um, capable of being on that team. And, you know, there's no bias in it. I just truly believe that my teammate should have been there. If I was on another team, I still would have been. I, when I was with Atlanta, I felt NECA should have been on the team, you know, when there was uh, a couple of tournaments being being picked for those teammates. So I, we stand with her. I think, like, I've always, you know, NECA's been someone that I've always looked up to. Like, she went to Stanford and went to Cal. She set the bar. Um, she's one of the rare players in this league that has um, their name, like, transcends, like, outside of basketball mm -hmm. in the community. So, like, and the, the way that this, like, has exploded shows you to be a woman of color in this in society alone is, like, hard. But to, like, have to be Nigerian and to have all the efforts that you have and not be able to represent the country that you chose to represent. She chose to be, to represent USA. Like, she could represent Nigeria. She could be on the Nigerian national team. They're in the Olympics, you know? Right. So, like, she chose to be on the USA for how long has she been in the in the pool? Like, and for her to break all the records, for her to set the standard of the USA camps every single time every she went, time. set the bar. She set the bar. Her name is stamped. U16, U17. Every single time Decker has played on the USA team in the USA pool, she has set the standard. She has set the bar. So again, it goes to show you that black women have to work ten times as hard every single time to get one percent. And to be like Nigerian, to have all those accolades and to choose to represent a country that doesn't want to represent them, it's like beyond, it's beyond just basketball. It's like, just like how our society is built. And I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that. And I think it's also like, Becca's never gonna say, oh, I should've made the team. That's never coming out of her mouth. She is humble. She's not going to say that. And she always takes the high road. And Sinead said that in her Twitter post. Sinead will, um, Neck will always take the high road. And it's just like heartbreaking for me to see her every single day come with positive energy. She literally couldn't play in the playoff game last year. Why? Because she carried the whole WNBA on her back in the bubble. She made w she made WNBA alive in the bubble. And you're telling me that she can't be on the USA team? She's the reason why the WNBA is the WNBA. And you're telling me why she can't be on the USA team? Like explain that. She is the reason why the WNBA survived in the bubble last year. And the district, it's, it's, it's just disrespectful. And I really feel like, honestly, it goes to show like how powerful, how humble, how like every, like she always takes the high road and I'm so happy for her, honestly, like it's adversity. It's like, she's going to fight back and she's going to be end up on top because good people never end up, always end up where they're supposed to end up. And I really believe that even if she wasn't my teammate, even if I hadn't known her, I would have been like, Nicka Gumke, you are, you've, you've, you're stamped in this league and society. And I really just wanted to say that like to her, but I already know like, she's gonna be like Christine, I'm okay, it's life. And that's how she is. She always has that attitude. Um, she's one of the best leaders, one of the best teammates I've ever had. 
And uh, yeah, I love her so much. And I'm just so sad that she didn't get the opportunity to be, she should have been a two-time Olympian, but now she is not Olympian at all right now, but she will be, I know she will, so. The, uh, thank you, ladies. That's very uh, well said, and I, I truly appreciate your passionate words. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Roz. I see three more hands. If we can just do one each, um, we'll go to Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Good. Uh, good morning, ladies. And that was uh, very, uh, very well spoken. Um, yeah, just kind of building on that. And Brittany, you kind of mentioned it earlier, the lack of reasoning and the lack of clarity for that reasoning on why NECA was, was um, not put on the team. Has that kind of become a discussion amongst the team with NECA herself? Like, is that something you guys have, I mean, I, mean, I can understand not wanting to divulge in private conversations. I just kind of want to get your input on the lack of clarity and how, if that is starting to really uh, ups, be more upsetting than the fact that NECA wasn't on the team herself, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just principle. Like if we just talk in general principle, uh, no, we're not. I, we're not sitting here saying like we deserve, we demand. You know, it's just more so like, hey, okay, you didn't like this is like a boom cave we're talking about here, and this is a highly resume player. She's been to all your camp. She's done everything that would you would think that would put her on this team. So yeah, the question kind of falls down to okay, why or you know, just as a courtesy, you don't even have to be public or just, you know, like behind closed doors, if even if you want to do that. The thing is, is we all have relationships with USA basketball. So it, that's why it's more of a, yeah, at this point, why not say something? Like we, we see you at camp all the time. We see you call us, you email us, you do all these things to get us to the camp, to work out, to put our bodies to the max because understand that these camps are happening when we're supposed to be like resting. resting and taking a break. So you're, we're called into these camps. We give our bodies up, we give our time up when it's time that we can go see family, we can go see friends. We can go relax. We can go rest and recover. We're going to these camps and we're putting our bodies through 12 months of a cycle. And you don't think that it's like not okay to not give an answer when being asked like okay why like it is a different story if you're not being asked and yeah you don't have to say it but now people are asking like it's not just us it's everybody like okay why didn't she get picked they're like what came down to these final 12 because mind you all 12 that picked them are more than capable but we're saying that Becca was capable too and it's been more times than not there's been more times not than it has that she hasn't been picked she hasn't been picked at all so we're just trying to figure out why so I don't think I don't know I think my first go around. Thank you both. Last two, John W. Davis, Windsider. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I appreciate your comments on NECA. I'd like to ask about something else if I could, uh, respectfully. Um, I feel like with seven steals, you know, in the last game, you're starting to get the stats that voters are going to look at when it comes to awards, Brittany. Uh, if you could make the case in your own words, I know we've talked about it from day one, but I think the stats are, are getting there to back this up. Uh, kind of make the case yourself why you think you should be Defensive Player of the Year and, and first team. And then, Christine, I know that you go hard on defense as well. What do you like about Slim's defense? I'll go first, so she's going to talk about herself. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> I feel like, honestly, like, I call her bubble slip. Every time she, like, has a good breakout game, I'm like, that's bubble slip. That's what she does. Like, in the bubble slip, was so focused. Like, every single week, she, like, I was like, dang, why did Atlanta trade her? How did Atlanta trade her? Like, every single game, when she was playing in the bubble with that energy, like, she brings, like, she makes me want to play harder. I feel like when you have a player like that, I feel like the, the definition of defense is activity and energy. Like, and that's what, like, she does. And also, she understands other players' weaknesses, so she pushes them into their weaknesses. And to have a player that, like, really understands the game, understands her ability, understands, like, basketball, like, has high basketball IQ, and also brings that, like, energy 
and intensity every single game. And also like throughout the injuries that we had, the role that she's had to step in and fill it, it's been very like, for me being back here, I don't know how she played before I got here, but when I'm, I know when I see bubble slip, mm -hmm. that's the defensive player of the year. That's what we need, that's what we want. And I really feel like, yeah, she's not gonna go to her own board, but like as her teammate now, I feel like she's grown into someone that you can say like, that's a, def that's a defensive stopper. Like she's gonna stop the best players in the, on the other team and she can't do it alone. So we all have to kind of build around her, help her. And I really feel like again, I'm gonna say NECA, that could hurt anybody in this league. And I'm going to add her to the mix because I feel like when Becca is healthy, she can hurt any player. And she's been on Slim's back, like in Slim's ear. Every, like I'm seeing it every possession. Um, Slim, we need to do this, 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 and this. So having that ear, like increasing her IQ, increasing her just ability, giving her that confidence, I really feel like Slim is like a contender and it should be talked about more. Just like other people on other teams are being praised for offense ability, she needs to be praised for her defense ability. Like, any, I feel like any coach would want a player like Slim on their team. Yeah, we gonna get one. Um, I, I mean, okay. Man, I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> um, I want, when it, when it comes to Depoy, I really want to like challenge the, like the the actual title, like defensive player of the year. You know, I feel like there's been times where we've applauded things that should be like naturally done by people above six four. Like, you know, I'm not taking away the like defensive players that have won in the past years or we talking about NBA too. We are like NBA and WNBA. Like we we really need to like sit down and really discuss like what makes a defensive player because if it's rebounds and steals, then everybody should be defensive player of the year because everybody rebounds and some people steal. But, and I mean to say that in a sense, because when we really looking at a deep boy, I look at, okay, how are they, the, the people that they're primarily guarding, right? What are their stats? How are the, how is their games versus you versus everybody else in the league versus you versus everybody else who's going for deep boy? How did they guard that player? You know, whether it's a guard or a post, but still like their efficiency rating, you know, or, or the, the individual's defensive rating. I look at those things. The last guard to win it was Elena, right? Two back to back, right? Like, was it 17 and 18, right? 17 and 18. I look at those. I look at Alicia Clark's. I had looked at Alicia Clark's um, stats, what made her the top two candidate for defensive player of the year. You know, I've looked at Pat, even post players. I've, and that's why I make the comment of like, okay, well, if we're going to talk about defensive player of the year and it only comes out to rebounding and a couple steals a game, like, that's not, that's not defense, you know, and obviously it's being a presence, but um, I also feel that goes in the deep way, like having your presence felt. I know every night I step on that court, that coach on the other side, they are trying to figure out how the heck can I get my player open? How the heck are we going to figure out this offensive sets with Brittany on the court? It has to be because that's my goal every game. I go and I sit with LT, then we talk about film. We break down film on myself and we break down film of other players that I have to guard, other players' teams. What do they do when we do this? I, I look for little holes and in, in little gateways to make me that much better on defense. And I even told her this morning, it's fun being able to continuously grow in this defensive field. There's never a field that you are going to be perfect in because everybody's game is different. So to, to just come in every day and just be excited about, you know, guarding, it's fun. But on the back end of that, I just want to make it very clear that I am a two-way player. <laughs> like, I am really, really um, tired, not tired, but it's kind of frustrating like, when I go back and I, and I watch games or I, I hear talks about, like, you know, like, oh, she has an offensive side. It's like, I, I didn't play defense my first three years of, of the league. Like, everybody knows that I can score, that I'm a scoring guard. It's just now that I have this defensive prowess on, on me where I just want to challenge myself. But I am indeed a two-way player. And the beginning games, the beginning games were 
a little rough. I had to figure it out, but I'm figuring it out in these past three, four games. But I'm a two-way player, and I just want to put that out there for myself. Like, I can score. I am a bucket, okay? <laughs> I am a bucket. But, um, you know, that is as much as I'll go past the humble strike because it was just, it was just getting, no, 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 it was, it was getting, it was getting under my skin a little bit, but um, yes, Depoy is my goal in in first team defense is my goal. And I just know that I know who I am to my team. I know my role and, you know, I take that with a lot of pride and, and, and I take that and I strive with it and I come in every day to work to be the best team in that league. Thank you both.